the last time things really, really went to shit? It's almost like Shiki caught some kind of all overpowering urge to kill. Like he wasn't himself. Honestly, I have no idea what's, what's going on. My stomach acid rises in my throat. I throw everything back up. My food. My gastric juices. Everything while I cry. <sighs> There's nothing left in my stomach. My body continues to force me to throw up. As if trying to undo what had occurred and return me to the everyday. Pain, it hurts, and my insides are burning, the tears won't stop, and my body collapses to the floor like a pile of garbage. I keep crying. I killed someone. I killed her without reason, without mercy. Like breaking apart at all? What was it all about? Why... I felt like that? Why I killed her? Even now, I can't find a reason. It's a lie. No. It's too old to be true. That thing that just happened might not be real. Because this is just one of those dreams I have when I faint. It's a lie. Besides, how can someone cut apart someone else like that? It's just a knife. I read it in a book once. It takes a whole day of strenuous labor to cut someone up, even when using a saw. That's why there's no way I could have possibly done such a thing. With just a knife. These lines never existed in the first place. Everything was just a delusion I had fallen for. It's a lie. Classic juice drips over my lips, passing out of my mouth, dripping down my jaw. Mixed with the juices is something red. My throat is probably bleeding because my stomach keeps trying to throw up even when there's nothing left in there. It hurts. That's why it is. This isn't a dream. I'm just lying to myself. Yes, actually, I understand everything. I lusted after her. Just looking at her aroused me. When I cut her apart, it was so thrilling. I almost ejaculated. His eyes too. I knew these lines could cut things apart like paper being shredded. I should have understood that even a person could easily be cut apart. Like I just did to her. I'd lived a normal life. Without even thinking about something like that. If I really am the sort of dangerous person who would easily kill just about anything, then I should have put out these eyes. I left a life without seeing anyone. I'm sorry, Sensei. I'm so sorry. Not even such a simple promise. But I don't care about myself. I killed that person. A person's life up until now. The people around that person. The future that person dreamt of. Everything 
destroyed by a stranger. If never regret it, I cannot be forgiven. Even if I apologize, I cannot be forgiven. Have I gone insane? I don't know. There isn't even a trace of that impulse left. But if that impulse came back again, what will happen to me? The thought of holding back never crossed my mind. I didn't even consider trying to stop myself. Kill this girl. If it had seemed like the obvious thing to do, and I went through with it, then there's nothing I can do. Then the answer is simple. I must be insane. I've probably been mad since eight years ago, when I miraculously came back to life from a fatal accident. I'm cold. The sun had gone down without me noticing. What time is it now? I can't tell. My eardrums are filled with noise, like a static TV. Static, static, static. The sound doesn't stop. It's terribly cold. If I stay sitting down on this bench like this, I think I'm going to die. Static. 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 I don't feel anything. I don't care about that repeating noise or the freezing cold. My body is shivering. And maybe due to the cold or the uneasiness or the fear. Or regret. I can't tell which. I've killed someone and I can't explain why I did it without any reason. What a joke. There's no reason. So there's no way I can explain it. I killed her just because I felt like killing her. Such a reason is insanity. Yeah. It would be so easy. If I was just insane, but my heart still remains sane, it's only because I'm still sane that I can feel this numbness. Static, static, static. Knife is still in my hand, resolving this by killing myself. That's pretty easy, but I can't do it. I'm still sane, but I can't do it. My heart fears death, and somewhere in my heart, I know that doing so will not settle this, or atone for it. The noise continues, my body, te my body temperature continues to plummet. I can't kill myself, but if I leave things as they are, I will disappear. Maybe that's for the best. Even if a killer like me survives, If I just quickly die like this, Tonokun, suddenly my name is called. I raise my head. Yes, Senpai. It feels like decades since I last saw her. What are you doing? Sitting out here in the rain? Rain? Oh, I see. The static noise up until now was the sound of rain. No wonder it's cold. I can see now that I'm completely soaked and freezing. Well, you don't even have an umbrella. You 
going to catch gold like that? Tonokun? Senpai's voice is so painful. It was only a few hours ago that I had last heard it, but now it sounds so distant. Tonokun? Can you hear me? Uh, ah, yeah. It wouldn't be so bad to catch a cold. I just reply without thinking. That one too. You'll catch more than a cold with me like this. Even if it is October. Her sentence cuts off as she touches me. How long have you been like this, Tonokun? You're so cold. Senpai pulls my arm and forces me up from the bench. I'll lend you my umbrella, so please hurry and go home. And do something about your body. It'll be really a matter of life and death if you don't warm up quickly. Huh, yeah. But I can't go home. I can't go anywhere ever again. I can't go home after doing something like that. I don't think there's anywhere left I can rest anymore. Senpai stares at me. I see. Let's go back to my room. It's closer than your house, so it's perfect. Senpai pulls me by your, my arm. I can't shake her off. I can't think about anything at the moment. And, Senpai's warmth is the only certain thing in this world where everything feels numb. Senpai's room is a common one-room apartment in a two-story building. Just one really small cramped room, the size of six tatami mats. And one kitchen. As one might expect from Senpai, the room is a neat one. Let's reveal facts. Relaxes my numbed nerves just a little. Here, please wipe yourself with this. He hands me a bath towel. Sorry, I don't have any clothes that fit you. Please just bear with this for a while. I'll go prepare something warm for you to drink right away. Sempa retreats to the kitchen. I'm left by myself in the neat room. I've never imagined coming into a girl's room like this. A girl's room. The room of a girl. Across room, which I forced myself into, and kill, kill the girl in. I feel like throwing up. What am I doing here? In such a place? I have absolutely no right to receive Senpai's hospitality here. Thanks for waiting. Here you go. Tonokun. You've got to wipe yourself down, quickly. Senpai scolds me as he begins to rub my head with a bath towel. See? Your shirt is all soaked, too. You've got to take it off. You might get Mia like this. A very fierce looking senpai. And does the button on my shirt. Suddenly, her fingers stop. Uh, uh. Somebody has a long hard look at my chest. This is a healed wound, isn't it? Oh, she must be surprised to see an old wound on my chest. The bone like marks are right in the middle of my chest. She might be surprised at seeing them because she didn't know. Yeah. They're fine. It's already been eight years. I see. Thank goodness. 
If this wound was the reason you're acting funny, I would have to take you to the hospital right away. Senpai gives a faint, soft smile. A twinge. And I see her smiling face. My chest hurts. It's alright. I can do it by myself, so leave me alone. Okay. I'll bring you some tea then. Oh. If you take your shirt off, please use that sheet there and warm yourself. I wipe my trousers with the bath towel. But even so, my trousers are still wet. The sheet is going to get soaked if I cover myself with it. I take off my shirt and wrap the top half of my body with a towel. Uh, are you finished wiping yourself? And let's have some tea. Senpai sits down, holding a tea set. Please sit down too, Tonokun. I can't calm down with you standing up. I do as I'm told and sit down. Senpai pours some English tea and hands it to me. Neither of us say anything. Senpai drinks her tea, as if she doesn't notice my presence. Following Senpai's example, I drink some as well. It's hot, so hot that it hurts my tongue. The more I've put the pulse into me, it feels like my heart, brain and all my other organs that stopped begin to move a little again. Senpai says nothing, it's not long before the tea cup's empty. Senpai naturally refills the cup again with more. Ah, uh, I get the feeling that I have to say something. Don't know, Kun. I recall in shock. I'm going out for a bit. Can I count on you to look after this house? Ah, uh, yeah. That's fine. Alright, then I leave it up to you. I do wonder where she's going. I'll be right back. So I didn't do anything funny. I wonder how serious she is. As she speaks, Senpai leaves. I'm alone again. I want something I felt up until a moment ago. It's quickly cooling down. Senpai didn't ask me anything. She takes a person like me into her room and looks after me. I guess it's a natural thing to do. I didn't notice. Want of tea. The neatness of the room. What is many, many times more comforting than those things is having someone beside me. I just hurts. A little while ago, I preferred to be alone, feeling nothing. But now, I become uneasy. Just by her absence. I want to scream like I've gone crazy. What arrogance. I'm a murderer after all. I don't have any right to Senpai's kindness. But I'm selfishly wanting Senpai to quickly, quickly come home. I'm home, Tano kun. Thanks for looking after the place. Sen. Pie. It seems Senpai had bought all sorts of things. 
There are several plastic bags hanging from her hands. Let's see. Please wear this for now. It's cheap, but it's better than wet clothing. By the way, bath should be about ready now. Should feel a bit better after relaxing in there for a while. Uh huh? Sampa neatly prepares everything. My choice of clothes, a bath. This person is. Even though there's no need to do so. For a person like me. It's okay, Senpai. I'm going home. I can't cause you any more trouble. What are you saying, Tonokun? You said you can't come can't go home, right? I've already bought food for two, so please take responsibility. Responsibility? Senpai? Please warm yourself up, eat dinner, and get yourself together before you go home. If you go home with a face like that, I'll be so worried. I won't be able to sleep. My chest hurts. Happiness. I'm so happy I'm about to cry. But on the other hand... I'm in fear of her kindness. Why? Yes? What is it, Tonokun? Why do you go so far, Senpai? I don't any have any right to be treated kindly by you. I killed someone. I can't have someone taking care of me. I'm hopeless. I made a very big mistake just then, and I ran away without taking responsibility. I was even considering just dying. I'm trying to cling to Senpai. That's sin. The life I took with my own hands. I'm trying to make it something that didn't happen in my mind. The mistake I made is unforgivable. No, I don't think it should be forgiven. That's why I'm hopeless. I have no right to be treated well by you here, Senpai. Senpai sighs. It seems you're convinced that you're a bad person, Tonya-kun. She answers simply. Senpai grasps the truth lying deep within me. But that just shows you have no confidence in your own actions. You know you made a mistake, but you don't understand whether it's good or bad. That's why you have no choice but to drive yourself into a corner until things become clear to you. Now that's... I don't know, but yet yeah, I'm taking in the fact that I did it, yet I still don't understand why. I've killed someone, that makes me a bad person. Maybe I've just been forcing myself into the role of a villain as I try to confirm where my sin lies. I don't know what your mistake is. I 
to put it bluntly, I don't care. You say you have no right to, to kindness, but that's just your point of view. I'm not being kind to you for your sake, so please, don't worry about it. Well, I mean, I'm doing this because I want to. It has nothing to do with your circumstances. It may be a bother to you, but please, just think of yourself as having been caught by a mean spirited senpai and give up. Saying this, senpai smiles. That soft, protective, faint smile 